Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Recently, our orchids have been blooming one by one, especially our Calia orchids. This genus thrives in our hot, humid Pennsylvania summers, and I have made this video to help you understand how to optimize their summer care. Calia orchids and their hybrids can be very rewarding to grow. Calia flowers offer a great array of colors, shapes, and fragrances. For example, this one has very strange colors. The petals are green with burgundy spots, with a bright rose red center. This Calia is also particularly fragrant. We all know that jasmine is very fragrant, but I find the scent of this orchid to be even more enjoyable and its scent can cover a larger area. Secondly, Calia are very easy to grow. They will tolerate more dryness and a lower humidity than other orchids. Ours dips as low as 30% humidity and we have no problem. Some of our Calia are grown bare-rooted, like this one. Maintenance on orchids grown like this is very simple. When the weather is hot and dry, spray these orchids once in the morning and once in the evening. When the temperature is low, spray water once a day. Calia requires two main conditions to flower. One is sufficient light and the other is a temperature difference of at least 10 degrees Celsius between day and night. Therefore, in summer, it is recommended that you keep Calia outdoors and let them receive sufficient light if your climate allows for it. At the same time, the temperature difference between day and night in summer is also conducive to the blooming of these orchids. That is why I have a lot of Calia blooming right now. After the Calia begins to bloom, we can move it indoors for the whole family to enjoy. At the same time, the lower temperature and light indoors can prolong the flowering period. After the flowers fade, we put them outdoors and let them grow quickly and save up more energy for their next display. The flowering period of Calia can range from a few weeks to a month long. This isn't as long as Phenolopsis. However, a healthy Calia can bloom several times a year. This yellow flower one, for example, just bloomed in June and now there are flower buds again. If your Calia is growing well and the light level and temperature differences are sufficient, but it is not yet blooming, it may be that the orchid is still relatively small and not yet mature. We have to be patient. When the orchid grows up and saves energy in the pseudobulbs, it will bloom. If your Calia has been planted for several years, looks healthy and still has not bloomed, then there may be insufficient light or the temperature difference between day and night is not large enough. Let's talk in detail about the light, temperature, humidity, watering, fertilization, and cultivation medium requirements, and go over what we should pay attention to when caring for Calia orchids, especially now when the weather is hot in summer. As mentioned earlier, Calia need plenty of light to bloom, but that doesn't mean that you can leave them to roast in the sun. In summer, especially around the solstice, the ultraviolet rays are strong and it is easy to sunburn orchids, even those which love sun. Pay careful attention when walking the fine line between adequate and excessive light. This may sound contradictory, but it's actually quite understandable. It's all a matter of proportion. We can place a Calia orchid in a place with direct sunlight in the morning or evening. For example, windows, 
facing east or west are ideal. The sunlight in the morning and evening is weaker, and the temperature is cooler in the morning, making it less likely to cause burns. But avoid the scorching sunlight of noon tide and afternoon. You can also place these orchids under a big tree. The sunlight filtered through the leaves is weaker and will not burn the leaves as easily. We can also judge the plant's comfort level by observing its leaves. The leaves will be dark green if the orchid is not receiving adequate sunlight. They will become more yellow as sunlight increases, and some burns will result in black or brown spots. Orchids will also produce reddish purple pigments like anthocyanins, which act like melanin in humans. It's basically your orchids getting a tan. These pigments will protect the plant from sunlight, and are especially common on new shoots. But it can also be a warning sign that burning is imminent, especially if the sunlight is getting stronger. Don't worry too much if the leaves get sunburned. If it's not serious, put the orchid in a low-light environment, and after a few days, the plant will readjust. In severe cases. The sunburned part of the leaf will dry out, which is generally only a cosmetic problem as long as most of the leaves are intact. Calia have thick leaves, and below the leaves are pseudobulbs, which store water and nutrients. These are reservoirs which Calia orchids can draw upon to grow well in low humidity environments. It is worth noting that almost all orchids require at least 30% air humidity. After a summer storm in our area, the air humidity can get as high as 70% or more. When the weather is hot and dry, it is still more than 30%. So there is no need to worry about humidity here. In most temperate, relatively wet areas. The ambient humidity should be above 30% in summer. If your area is extremely dry, a humidifier can be used to increase the humidity of the air in greenhouse or sunroom. Summer is a season when Calia grow vigorously and need lots of water. We usually water every two or three days here. For those Calia growing bare rooted, we spray water once in the morning and once in the evening. If it is a dry day, in summer the temperature is higher and the water evaporates quickly, so watering is relatively more frequent than in other seasons. The orchid is also actively growing and needs more water. The media should be soaked and the water pH should be slightly acidic, with a pH around 5.5 to 6.5. Regarding the best water quality for orchids. You can go to my channel and watch the video on that topic, which I posted earlier. In summer, there is a lot of rain, so we can use a large trash can to collect rainwater for watering orchids. We try not to use water from the hose too often. We are on treated city water, so in times of drought, it can build up salts on the roots and in the media. You should cut down on watering drastically in the fall, watering them once a week. When fertilizing, we give our Calia orchids MSU fertilizer. There are many brands of fertilizers out there for different water types. We apply this fertilizer at full strength weekly, flushing the pots at least once a week. With stored rainwater, if it doesn't rain, to prevent salt buildup in the media. Once fall comes around, we will move to partial strength fertilizer every two weeks until the orchids wake from their dormancy and begin growing again. Calia can be grown in pots, on their bare roots, on slabs of cork bark, or in wooden basket with or without media. For potted plants. You can use large chunks of bark mixed with volcanic rock, expanded clay pellets, and horticultural charcoal. I would like to emphasize here that the cultivation of Calia requires a medium 
with large chunks. The larger the roots, the larger the chunks. The medium with large particles is conducive to drainage, ventilation, and a healthy, expansive root system. If the media is relatively small and the air permeability is poor, it will quickly cause root rot, as calia roots do not respond well to constant moisture. When I put my calia in pots, I use terracotta pots for the most part, with a few in ceramic pots with large holes for additional aeration. If a calia's roots begin to rot, it is important to repot it. In order to prevent root rot altogether, we sometimes cultivate our calia with bare roots by attaching the orchid to a cork slab or placing it in a wooden basket with some lava rocks, large bark chunks, and wine corks around it. This cultivation method will never cause rotten roots. The management is more convenient, and the calia also grows very well. However, the orchid will have less of a tolerance for low humidity and will need to be sprayed daily. In this video, we introduced calia and a few key points for their summer culture. As you grasp these key points, I believe that your calia will thrive and bloom. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a message below. If you like this video, please thumbs up and share with more friends. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Thanks for your support. See you next time.